yeah so that that concept of these different elements joining forces um obviously you have the best opportunity to deliver a great outcome which which should be the best thing for everybody that's involved internal yes. external stakeholders people advising etc um bearing in mind you know i'm sure it's the same within the military sometimes you get people who or or factions within an organization or within a supplier who maybe feel like their nose has been put out of joint they don't feel like it's the right direction for them um how do you see that being managed within the military compared to within private organizations because there's always going to be people be people within departments who feel disenfranchised or it you know is that is that the problem of a, of a not clear objective and and is there a difference as to how you see that being managed in military versus uh civilian life yeah, I think, and now you're, now you're touching on the change, right? Some people don't don't see the need for that change, and that is, that means to me that you haven't explained enough why that change is needed. So the difference in the military is that it's crystal clear. You know, that, that's crystal clear why we do things. Everything we do is is linked towards a mission objective, campaign objective, and the commander's intent. So every single soldier out there doesn't matter what rank and seniority it doesn't matter. Every single, even civilians who are supporting the military understand what they're doing right now is something that is contributing what we want to achieve in the mission, campaign, and the commander's intent at the end of the campaign. So I think that is about communication. And, um, you know, we we all understand yeah, it's, it's always an improvement point. Eh? So it's always a development. We need to be better in communication. We need to be better at change management. But that by itself is a bit vague. What do you mean with communication? What do you mean with change management? I mean, people need to embrace the change. And it's it's about making them understand why it's needed for the company, for their team, their department, and themselves to make this change. People need to see it and feel it. Uh, you cannot just you know throw in some town halls and that's it. You know, it needs to... And it takes time. And people listening to the podcast will say, hey, Johnny, Harold, that's all great. We don't have the time. We also don't have the budget you know, to bring in a bunch of implementation experts and solution providers. But I can guarantee you that if, you, if you're looking into a total cost of ownership or a total cost of making that change, implementing the solution, uh, or you know, uh, having a redesign and a re-implementation of your operating models and organizational design, in the end, it will be more cost-effective. Because if you, I mean, we all know that above 70%, it's 76, according to McKinsey, your business transformation fail. 76%. That's why we don't, you know, it's because we don't spend time to making sure that we can clearly inspire, motivate people to make the change, to embrace the change, and they understand and are explained and they feel that this change needs to happen. And yes, that takes time. Does it need senior leadership to go and engage with, with local you know, people? Yes, it does. But so you need to make that time. If you don't, you will fail. You will definitely fail. Now, in the military, it's a structure which is you know, going over and over again. Again, it's coming back towards embracing that dynamic situation. Because it's dynamic, people understand this is happening, this is the decision, this is why, this is what, you know, what these guys are doing, this is what that team is doing, and I'm doing that to, to you know, to deliver on, on that situation, to have a proper response. The fact that it's so dynamic and you embrace that, makes people also feel more of a team and that's where the team spirit comes in place and they feel recognized they understand what they're doing is 100 percent needed not only aligned but also needed it's an essential part of achieving what they want to achieve when it comes to the mission campaign and the commander's intent that's the reason why i always advise companies if they have a, a an implementation at hand or if they have a a, a program and optimization or transformation to have a war or situation room. Yeah, we call it a situation room. Some people don't think war room is too aggressive, which I, I can totally understand, but call it a sit room, right? The, the situation room where you, it might be virtual. Yeah, we had um, many hybrids where you actually have a room with screens and you know, we, with 
with Zoom calls and with team calls and, and WebEx uh, things, you can you can have an interaction. But it's a it's also a symbol where the team can come together and have you know the thinking, the brainstorming, but also saying, "Hey guys, sorry, I made a mistake. I need help on this." You will have on the on the wall, uh, whether it's virtual or not, you will have the, the the latest and greatest information. So you can anticipate on what's going on, what's going well. You can use that that situation room to present your solutions, to present progress to leadership or executives or or stakeholders or whatever it is. So it, it is reinforcing that thought, and I think that is that is clear about you know again making that that team spirit work. 